Hello and welcome. Today we are looking at the Hubson H122D X4 Storm Quadcopter. This small agile quadcopter is very fast. It does 360 degree flips. It has 5.8 gigahertz FPV. It has a 720p HD camera with wide angle lens. And it comes also in a set that includes the full FPV package, including monitor and goggles. So now let's take a closer look at this set. Now the drone comes in this rectangular white simple box. Um, it has a very clean and simple um, display and packaging here. It says the uh, Hubson X4 Storm there. And you can see the transmitter with the uh, 5.8 gigahertz screen. Here on the side, there's just some um, uh, notices there, right here on the back, a front view of the quadcopter. And uh, you can see the goggles and the transmitter again, it's for 14 plus. And right here on the side, there's a listing of all its features, such as the um, 720p camera, the uh, 5.8 gigahertz FPV, the 360 flips, um, so on and so forth so very cool packaging so now let's open her up and take a look inside right here at the beginning it says here we fly with your dreams so very nice packaging there and as soon as you open it up you will see uh, three separate boxes one for the drone and transmitter so I'm assuming if you get the plane package you would only get a small box like this that has the core, the drone and the transmitter. And then what you're getting additionally here is the uh, FPV, 5.8 gigahertz FPV goggles and uh, screen. And, um, and here's a little box with additional. So let's pull out this box right here. This is the drone. Let's pull out the um, box here. I'm assuming there's some charge cables, antennas stuff like that and let's pull out the the goggles here so we got the three boxes here and sure enough this one here could have the um, cables and stuff so let's pop that out here. And, um, so yeah we have the um, sunshade for the screen um, USB uh, micro USB charge cable, an antenna for the small box. Uh, let's look at the FPV box here, or the uh, goggle box. So we open that up, and here are the goggles, right there. And I guess you would open it up here, and right right away you would see the screen right there. So you would need to put the antenna on that. So that's pretty cool. And now let's take a look at the, the drone here. Nicely packaged here. So here's the drone here with the battery. And um, fold up the antenna there. Pretty cool. And then down here, once we remove this box, there's two more boxes. I guess one here for the transmitter here and here for the controller so we can open that up and here is the controller very cool and as you can see it um, snaps open there to put the uh, screen the included screen and some instruction manuals here right there at the bottom instruction manuals and another box with some additionals here probably uh, another charge cable because the um, screen does require its own charging so yep we got spare propellers screwdriver another micro USB actually no not a micro USB this is a uh, a charge cable for the uh, hobby battery of the uh, quadcopter and 
some screws so pretty neat so a lot of boxes here Hubson has put uh, they definitely compartmentalized all this so now let's organize all this and take a more organized look now taking a last look at the contents of the box we have the uh, drone itself it's 7.6 volt 710 milliamp lipo battery its charger the 5.8 gigahertz FPV screen the antenna for that screen the micro USB charger for that screen the FPV goggles that will hold the screen, the transmitter for the drone, a, a screwdriver, spare propellers, screws, a sunshade which you have to assemble because it comes in several parts, and um, the uh, instruction manuals and brochures. So now that's the contents of the box. Now let's take a closer look at the drone. Now taking a closer look at the drone, it is a very interesting looking drone here. It's in the style of a uh, traditional uh, racing drone with the uh, battery strapped in at the top there and a, a carbon fiber frame, uh, which this actually is a true carbon fiber frame. Uh, it's not a plastic imitation or anything like that. And there is plastic around other parts. And this is a very sturdy quadcopter, particularly sturdy. I mean, this can take uh, very heavy crashes and not even the propellers get badly damaged so um, kudos to Hubson for a good solid construction on this quadcopter now um, here at the front here you could see it's a 720p wide angle tiltable camera here and it does have a solid tilt uh, you could tilt it almost all the way up which is very good because uh, when you FPV this and you go at, at the highest rate it will have a very steep tilt so you can actually see forward very well and it does tilt downward quite a bit uh, not all the way down but but just enough so very good camera there you can see the Hubson logo there um, and this protects the camera very well because you can see if it takes a crash the cameras uh, packed in in there here's the antenna here uh, these are brushed motors, so this is not a brushless motor uh, race quad, but this is uh, very, these motors are very powerful, and this is a very fast uh, quadcopter nonetheless. Uh, there are LED lights here at the front, I believe those are white, and right here in the back there are a couple of red ones. And um, right here at the bottom, you will see this is like a beeper. So if the uh, quadcopter uh, either is running low on power or is disconnected from the controller, uh, you, it'll beep on its own. So uh, you could find it if it crashes in some bushes or something and you've lost connection with the controller, it will help you find it. And um, it has very sturdy uh, rubberized plastic legs, I believe, that can handle rough landings and as you can see they're kind of scuffed up a bit from some rough landings and um, what else is there here um, there is a slot right there for the uh, SD card so you would put an SD card there and it will record onboard footage which is very good and that's about that now let's go over the battery a little bit it just straps in like this and you remove the strap and this is a 7.6 volt um, 710 milliamp lipo battery with a 30c rating and it's uh, somewhat proprietary this the size and shape is proprietary but the um, connector uh, you could use a standard hobby grade charger and charge this so um this is a uh, you know 2s battery that you can just simply charge with the included charger which is right here and with this charger it does take about an hour or so to charge but uh, if you have a, um, a hobby grade charger this does charge very fast and I've, I've had it charge within half hour or so with a um, you know with a, a strong uh, hobby grade charger so uh, that's pretty cool and 
to turn it on, basically you would uh, connect the two connectors right here to start up the um, quadcopter like so. And so once you connect those two connectors like that, the um, quadcopter will be on. And as you can see, those are the lights. They're not, aside from these two main lights, the uh, red in the back and the white in the front, there aren't any additional lights across the uh, landing legs or on the side. So uh, orientation is pretty good. Uh, perhaps it could be a little better if it had extra lights, but um, it is uh, very solid nonetheless. And so it's a very strong, sturdy, nimble quadcopter. It has a good weight to it, um, a little on the heavy side, but, but not too heavy. And um, it does uh, pretty good, you know, with its included battery, you, you get about a six minute flight time which is all right for a high-speed racing drone like this. But a very neat uh, small quadcopter, very fast, very strong, very good looking. So now let's take a closer look at its transmitter. Now taking a closer look at the transmitter for the Hubson H122D X4 Storm. This is a very comfortable gamepad type transmitter with a good grip. Um, it does take four AAA batteries, like so, four AAA batteries. And um, I guess there's an optional uh, screw hole there. It, it didn't come with one uh, initially, but I guess you can put one there if you want to reinforce the batteries. And um, there is a foldable center portion right here to put the uh, FPV screen. And right here I have the FPV screen as you can see with its antenna on and make sure prior to turning on the screen you always have the antenna on because you could short out the antenna port there and so you would basically put this on like so and this is the um, overall uh, transmitter here with the um, FPV screen and uh, you have a lot of the traditional controls here you have your on off button you usually have to keep it pressed for a few seconds till you see the lights go on. Uh, with these indicators here, uh, you have this light button to turn on and off the LEDs on the quadcopter. You have your left throttle stick, your right rudder stick. You have this button here to toggle, um, turning on and off the HUD from the uh, 5.8 gigahertz screen. So all your telemetry such voltage, as voltage, uh, uh, battery power, um, flight time, so on and so forth. If you push this, you could turn that all on, or if you push it again, it'll turn it all off and you can see a more of a, a clear FPV view. So that's what this button is for. Um, right here at the top, um, you have your uh, picture button and your video button on your upper left corner. And on the upper right, they're essentially just uh, trimming buttons there to trim. And um, these uh, joysticks are buttons as well. So if you push the left throttle stick, that's for flips. So you'll hear some beeps and then you would move the rudder in the direction you want to flip. And so you would move it like this if you want to flip in that direction and so on and so forth. And if you push in the right rudder stick twice, uh, there are two speed modes. There's low and high. So you would push it once and there's one beep for low speed or beginner's rate and then push it again for two beeps meaning you're at the higher uh, racing rate now one last note since this is not an altitude hold quadcopter uh, you'll notice that the left throttle stick is not spring loaded so you have to manually manage the throttle but uh, this is a very smooth uh, stabilized uh, six axis gyro quadcopter so uh, managing that and having a smooth stable flight uh, is definitely achievable. So um, now taking a closer look at the um, monitor and some of its controls here. This uh, monitor does have DVR so you can record footage uh, from it. Uh, right here on the side you can put your SD card and right here you can charge the um, actual screen and the screen has a big battery. I believe it's a 3.7 volt uh, 2300 milliamp uh, battery built in 
and it does take a while to charge, but fortunately uh, you, you can have several flights before you have to charge this again. So uh, it, it does have a good, uh, you know, on time there. And here is the on off switch here on the side. And here are your uh, plus and minus um, buttons here. So when you navigate through the menu and you need to increase the brightness or the saturation, you can increase it with this button or decrease it with that button. And here on the left side, we have um, a mode button that's essentially to navigate or t uh, toggle between uh, photo and video. If you want to take a photo or if you want to uh, shoot video on the included SD card. Here we have the record button. So if you have it in picture mode, when you hit record, it'll just take a picture of the screen onto the SD card. And if you have it in video mode and you hit record, it'll start recording whatever's on the screen, whatever's streamed in on the FPV to the SD card. Here's a menu where you can toggle between uh, brightness, saturation, colors, and so on. And then you would just simply use these two buttons to increase or decrease those properties. And last but not least, this is the bind button. So initially, this is bound to the quadcopter out of the factory. Uh, so you will get an FPV feed right away. But if you, I guess, needed to bind it to another one, you can push this and keep it pressed and then turn on the quadcopter and it will connect. Now, one thing about that, uh, this quadcopter, you can use other 5.8 gigahertz uh, FPV goggles with. You can use Fat Sharks, um, Esheen, um, EV800s, uh, so on and so forth. You can use other um, FPV goggles with this. Uh, but this screen will not work with other quadcopters. So uh, I even tried uh, pairing this or trying to get a FPV feed with some of the older Hubson H501S or H107D uh, micro uh, quadcopters from Hubson. And I couldn't bind uh, this FPV uh, feed to the screen. So be aware that this screen is very limited. It's not like you can use this with other uh, 5.8 gigahertz quadcopters. This is primarily uh, meant for this quadcopter and perhaps maybe some of Hubson's newer uh, 5.8 gigahertz um, drones, but um, so you can't use this with other uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, quadcopters, but you can fly this uh, using other uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, goggles and screens. So you just have to find the right channel where the uh, live stream is coming from. So that's essentially it uh, for the uh, screen and the controller and the uh, drone. Uh, let, let's go over the goggles here for a second. Uh, these goggles are mainly just a, a big plastic container to house the screen. So you would just open this up. And once you have this screen here, you would just uh, pop it in. So just pop it in here, it slides in and then you would close it. And the view is very clear. It, it does have, um, it does have a, uh, like a magnifying uh, or amplification uh, view in there. So you, you can see it very clearly, uh, which is good. Um, but they are kind of big and clunky. So, so they are kind of heavy and kind of very boxish. So, so they will look a little uh, clunky and, and they are kind of a little heavy, but they are still somewhat comfortable because there is a lot of padding right here on the sides and the straps are configurable. So they are comfortable, but they are somewhat big and a little on the heavy side and they're not uh, the most stylish uh, FPV goggles out there. And another uh, side note also, uh, since the screen is like locked in there you can't adjust or hit the buttons while it's on the goggles there are some of these that have the buttons exposed and you you can change settings while you have this on but on this one you have to make sure all the settings are set prior to putting them in the goggle because once you lock it in uh, there's really no access to the screen or its uh, buttons or settings so so that's essentially it for the goggles and the screen 
the uh, drone and the transmitter. Now let's take a closer look at uh, setting up a first time flight and uh, we'll take it for a uh, flight. So let's check so it out. So once you have a fully charged battery in the drone, um, what you would first do is connect the connectors here to turn it on like so. And you will see some blinking. At that point, you would turn on the transmitter. So you keep this pressed for a second and you'll have that light go on and you'll see that they both bind because it's bound out of the factory and at that point you can turn on the um, monitor right here it should be bound and it should boot up and right away you can see there's uh, an FPV feed here and uh, with very little lag because it's uh, 5.8 gigahertz and it has a very good range um, I, I'd say you know at, at least a hundred meters uh, worth of uh, FPV range so and as you can see there's some telemetry there as far as the um, uh, charge on the quadcopter a charge on the FPV screen uh, whether it's in picture or video mode right now it's in picture mode uh, as you can see from that icon and you could see uh, some of the um, the trim settings down there. So uh, right away, um, now we're bound with the screen, the transmitter, and the um, drone. Now the only other step is to calibrate the gyros, and that's done by... Um, now this one's a little different in its uh, gyro calibration. That's done by putting the uh, left throttle stick um, to the right, and then... Uh, you have to shake the uh, right uh, rudder stick a few times left and right until it's left and right a few times until it starts blinking and once that's done you'll see some blinking there in the back and once it's done blinking that means the gyros have been calibrated make sure that that's done while the quadcopter is stationary and on the ground uh, surface uh, very flat without moving so uh, now everything's been calibrated and uh, bound and we have our FPV feed. Uh, I guess the next step is to ensure you either have an SD card on the drone or the uh, FPV screen or perhaps even both and you can record footage off of that. And so now we will take it for a little flight and we will show both footage from the quadcopter which is um, you know HD uh, wide angle. And we will also show some uh, DVR footage from the screen, which is a low, little lower resolution, but we'll show a little bit of uh, all of those uh, flight footages. So check it out.
Thank you.